Hey there everyone, how is it going? You're joining both of us here today and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing this uh, Pokemon TCG set tier list that's been going around. Uh, we're going to discuss it and we're going to try and come to a consensus on each set. Oh boy. We're probably not going to do it. Uh, we're in the kitchen because we've got cups of tea and the dogs are about this is going to be a long one to record. Alright, so basically what we have to do is we just have to decide on a ranking for the sets, decide whether they are S plus tier, S, A, B, C, D, E, F, or F minus. Alright. Alright, let's just get on with it. Base set. What are your thoughts on base set? Um, so I mean it's it's got a huge nostalgia factor. Yep. Um, some really good cards that I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Um, like the cards that you think of when you think of Pokemon. Yes, it's got your, your classic Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, all yeah. that stuff. Um, a lot of the artwork is Sugimori stock art. Yeah. Especially on the hollows, I think. It is just Pokemon on a plain hollow background. Yeah. So you probably lose some points for that. I don't have it's... a problem with Sugimori stock art because it's... Like, I like backgrounds. Yeah. I feel like he's really got the... Like, when you think of a Pokemon, sure. you want the Sugimori kind of interpretation of it at yeah. least once. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a high upset. Yeah, I think, obviously, we're basing this kind of more on, like, collectability right. and just aesthetic appeal rather than any sort of playability or anything. Um, and I think it having four different... Yeah, it has the four unique, unique sets, so it has your first edition, Shadowless, Unlimited, and then the base 2000 final print run. It has a lot of interesting extras and errors and stuff going on through it, so there's the... I think my favourite is the Wartortle with the evolution box oh, error. Really Wartortle involves one, yeah. from Wartortle. There's the Blastoise that's missing the stage. And then if you count them, there's the Trained X A and B. Right. That's whether you count those as part of the set. Um, I don't think I do. Okay. I'm thinking A. Weirdly, that's kind of where I was settling. Okay. As we were talking about it more, I probably could have gone up into S, but I would be happy with it. Let's put it into A. We can always move it later if we mm -hmm. find that we're being too harsh. Okay, so jungle. Anything very, to say? I mean, it's it's very similar stuff to base set, but um, I think it's a lot. It's one of the. It's the first set, obviously, where uh, they doubled up on the hollows and the rares because yeah. in Japan it only had hollows. It didn't have non-hollow rares. So there's a double up there. But it does introduce the evolutions in the TCG, which mm -hmm. we're a big fan of those. And if we looked at the errors of the last set, uh, the full hollow error set that misses the symbols, very cool. Yeah, that's a really cool um, set. I don't think it's as good as base set overall. I think I agree with that, other than the Eevees. Yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm floating B or C. What are you thinking? Mm, I think B, B I would be good with. Yeah, right. I don't think it's quite as low as a C. Okay. Now, Fossil. Um, I don't particularly like Fossil. That's fair. Um, I like the pre-release Aerodactyls. Yep. Interesting card. It does also finish putting Generation 1 into the TCG. That's true. Uh, in English, it doesn't do Mew, because they save Mew as a promo. Right. In Japan, it added Mew as well. So... I don't know, but I kind of agree that I don't like it as much as Jungle. Um, it does have the third, it has the uh, final print run that had the change, like base That's set though. True, yeah. So if you're looking for a real collecting challenge, you can try and go for that final print run, which affected all of the non hollows, uh, plus the hollows after us as a promo, where again the copyright date was changed to 99 to 2000. Yeah. So I'm, I'm inclined to stick with B again. I was. So I was on D until you You're mentioned on D. Yeah, wow. until you mentioned the Fossil Two Thousand print run. Okay. I think I would go up to C for that, but I don't think I could put it at the same level I as Jungle. Okay, I think I could put it as. We'll put it as a C. We'll see what happens. And my reasoning for saying see what happens is we're at base set two, a reprint set of a lot of base set and Jungle cards, and. While it's rubbish, like, it's just not a good set. Where are you going with this? I don't think anything that contains original art Charizard Blastoise Venusaur 
should be lower than a C. What? Even if the set is not good, you have that original classic art. They provide cheaper versions of those for people who who want to own the art, but you know don't want to shell out for the expensive base set versions. So when we got to base set two, my thought was let's put it in F minus and move on. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I think we need to save F minus. Um. But, so if we uh, split the difference, we're in E. <laughs> I, I could be comfortable on E. I wouldn't put it okay. much higher than I mean, E, even with those original Yeah, my, my thing is fully based around the original arts. Like, it's not a good reprint set. It came out way too soon. Uh, and I guess, like, I guess it was a, it was better for competitive players because base set was hard to find at the time. I guess. So I guess it filled that niche for competitive players. But okay, we'll, we'll go E. <laughs> Splitting the difference. Team Rocket. Introduction of Dark Pokemon. Right. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of the Team Rocket set. Okay. Um, I like it quite a bit. Um, it also has the first Hollow Trainer cards. That's true. Which is an interesting way to go, because the first one's all of the Hollows of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So, Hollow Trainers is nice. Any interesting Pokemon? Dark Dragonite? Dark Dragonite's a very popular one. And there's the Era Dark Dragonite. Yeah. Where, because... Dark Dragonite appeared in both hollow and non-hollow versions. There is the era where it is non-hollow, but has the hollow numbering. So it is, there's some interest there. Um, I would think I'd drop it in C along with Fossil. I could, I could go for that. Okay. Okay, Gym Heroes. Um, so I, I really dislike a lot of the art in this set. Um, okay. But I like the idea. I think I've said before, I prefer the gym sets the way they were done in Japan. Because mm-hmm. gym one featured only the first four gym leaders. Gym two featured only the last four. But um, for the rest of the world release, they mixed them together. and For whatever reason. Yeah. Also, I've said before, I would love it if either of these sets had either one more or one less card. Because they're very similar set symbols. And they both have 132 cards in the set. So... It just makes it awkward when you're looking at them. Because, again, you can't set rate just by which gym leader I don't is. have that problem, but okay. Okay, well, I think we're, are we agreeing that Heroes is the worst of the two gym sets? Yes. Okay. I would maybe go D with it. Going D, okay. Oh, we are saving S for something good. Yeah. And then Gym Challenge, I think, has to be quite a bit higher. It has a lot more iconic cards as Blaine's Charizard. Mm-hmm. Very iconic card. And the first of many cards to put a fighting symbol instead of a fire symbol somewhere. <laughs> yep. The reason for that, by the way, um, is because in internal coding, um, when wizards did it, F stood for fighting and R was fire. So there's just a good chance someone put an F instead of an R. Yeah, and easy that's mistake where it ended to up. make. Yeah, not the last. Like I said not the last time that happened. But it's a lot more iconic. There's, there's another cool error in it later on, the Rocket's Minefield Gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Rocket's Minefield Gym and the Charizard were only corrected very, very late on. There's a specific type of booster box they were corrected in. Radar opened one recently, I don't remember the, the exact specifics. So, I'm inclined to put this up to A. I think it's a very cool set. I would definitely go, obviously, higher than Heroes. I'd probably have gone, like, B with it, though. B? Okay, I can say, I can see B. We'll go for B. Neo Genesis. So, I really like any set that introduces new Pokemon for the first time. Yep. Um, and this is kind of the start of Generation 2, which um, I really liked as a kid. Yeah, it's a very cool set. I, I really like cool Generation. Yeah, um, playing Crystal version. Generation I actually skipped as a, uh, Generation 2 and 3 I skipped as a kid. Really? I played Generation 1. Um, and then I was still kind of involved when Generation 2 came out, which mm-hmm. didn't really pay much attention, just stuck with Generation 1. And then when I came back into it, I jumped in at Generation 4. Hmm. And then played some of the Game Boy Advance games for Generation 3, but my only experience of, ge- of playing Generation 2 is Hot Gold. Wow. I loved Crystal. <laughs> I played I'm sure I would if I played it. It's I just... played a lot of that game as a child. Okay. Um, and I, I really like the... The Chikorita card in Neo Genesis. Um, I got as a kid from someone who had gone to Japan and got a Japanese version nice. before 
uh, you know, before Gold and Silver came out, so I have that kind of nostalgia with that card in particular, where it's like the first time I ever got to see a Generation 2 Pokemon. This, uh, I think, this is kind of where they started um, throwing a lot of Japanese promos into the English sets, too. Because there was uh, one set of the... There was, there was two of each of the starters in mm -hmm. the set, but in Japan, one of each of those was in a promo binder, so they added those in. Uh, I would be inclined to maybe go A with this. I think I really like the set. I'm happy there, yeah. Cool. Neo Discovery. So I'll go first. Introduces Espeon and Umbreon. Yeah. Other than that, I think there's a step down from Genesis. Yeah. I don't think it's as good. Um, fills out some more of the, you know, unknowns and stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know that I have anything... Like, really kind of good to say about kind it. of interesting. In Japan, Neo Discovery had Dark Raichu in it because really? Dark Raichu was the first ever English exclusive card, mm -hmm. and they designed it for Team Rocket, and it ended up in Japan's Neo Discovery set because Japan was so far ahead of us at that point. Their Neo Discovery set came out, or their Neo Two set came out like two months after our Team Rocket set. Wow, huh? That's kind of interesting. I'd be inclined for a D. It's an unexciting set, I'm especially when there. you consider compare it to the rest of the Neo sets. So putting a D. Yeah, I like it. All right, Revelation. I got nothing on Revelation. I would say S plus. I think this is an inc an incredible set. What? <laughs> so continuing with the introductions of Pokemon, mm -hmm. you have your first introduction of Celebi. Mm -hmm. You have the legendary dogs. We have Shining Magikarp and Shining Gyarados. First appearance of the Shining Pokemon. I just think it's Orin, a really, really good set. I don't think it's that good. Do you think it's... And actually, when you said that, when we were looking through my binders earlier, like, I didn't see it at all. Okay. I, as I was flipping through the binder, I was down in, like, the DE range. Really? Yeah. I, just... I guess you like Celebi and the Legendary Dogs a lot less than I do. Yeah, I mean, I like the dogs, but not, yeah, not anywhere near... Okay, so <laughs> so we have to decide between somewhere between S plus and D. <laughs> wow. Oof. I, I, um, mean, I would still maybe like it in S. I, th I mean, the intro, to, the first ever shining Pokemon for the full rest of the TCG, the the standard became some sort of special extra type of Pokemon that got added at the end of sets. So there was Shinings, then there was the EXs, there was Gold Stars, there was Level Xs, GXs, etc. This was the first set that introduced that. Obviously, it's not the first Secret Rare because uh, Dark Raichu had that right. in Team Rocket, but it introduced what became the standard for, like, the... And it's still going now. We have, like, the Rainbow Rares and stuff. Right. It, I think it is just... A monumental set, and I also love the artwork and stuff in it too. Uh, I didn't. Uh, the artwork was just fine for me. Like I could, I could maybe agree to put it in A, but I, I can't put it in oh S. God, it's all not right, that we're, good. we're going in A. <laughs> well, this what I had that as S plus, and I was going to suggest Neo Destiny as S because I think there's another very very nice set. I just don't personally like it as much as Neo Revelation. I imagine you're going to try and push it above Neo Revelation. I think I was going to put it below Revelation anyway. Okay. I thought you liked the uh, light Pokemon a lot more. I do really like the light Pokemon. Um, so I could I could maybe see it as like a, a B sort of set. Okay. Um, but the rest of the set is... I don't know what you... Eh? Well, I was say, I don't know what you're saving your S plus for, but I do know and I'm going to disagree with it together. <laughs> but, all right, I'll... There might be another one that I'm saving it for, so... Uh, I mean, could, could we put it in A alongside Revelation? Because I think that that's the light, fine. Like I said, I would have had it in S with Net Revelation S+, plus because the light Pokemon are very, very cool as well. They are. And then you continue on with the other Shining Pokemon. Where are the Shinings in um, Destiny? Celebi, Charizard, Mewtwo, Tyranitar, Steelix, Noctowl, Kaboot Ops. Something... <laughs> Yeah. There's eight of them. I, don't I mean, they're and they're more iconic. So yeah. I well, I mean, I, I don't know because they're they're more iconic Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I will say obviously, Charizard, Mewtwo are more iconic than Magikarp, Gyarados. But Shining Magikarp and Gyarados, specifically Shining, are very iconic because That's true. the Shining Gyarados appearing in the Lake of Rage yeah. in the Gold and Silver games, and the Shining Magikarp. I think there was a Shining Magikarp in the anime at some point. Pot I don't know. Potentially, and I th I think the 
as shiny Pokemon go, I think Gyarados is probably the pinnacle of shining Pokemon. I guess. Maybe until Genesect, because when he got his own movie. That's true, yeah. Um, oh, there's a dog bar. All right, so we're going to match it at A? Yeah, I'm good at A. Okay. All right, we've been joined by Elton because he won't stop attacking Cass. And we're on the Legendary Collection. I really like this set. It is a much better reprint set than Base Set 2, by a long shot. Uh, this is the, I think, the only thing in Pokemon where I'm really, really annoyed by the price of it. Because obviously things in Pokemon go up in price. Mm -hmm. So obviously, and I understand, obviously, you know, collectible stuff is going to go up in price, and I accept that, but... Uh, the dog is drinking a tea, by the way. Um, but for Legendary Collection, the packs were built to play sealed with. Mm -hmm. So if you, for example, open Alakazam as your hollow, your pack is going to have a Kadabra and I think two Abras in it. At so least, yeah. I think it would be so cool to sit and play sealed with Legendary Collection. Um, but you need like six packs and it's $200 a pack now. Oof. And yeah. <laughs> I, I can understand the price of it for as a collectible, but... It is way too much money f that I would want to pay to tear the packs open and then play with the cards. Yeah. Um, so that, that's one of the only ones where I'm actively annoyed at how much they are, and I, I really wish they were lower, but it's because I want to play with them. <laughs> Legendary Collection, um, I actually found some packs when I was in college. Yeah, you have a nice Legendary Collection binder. It's quite full. Yeah. And I didn't know at the time um, that... The set was basically made for playing sealed. So, you know, when I opened the packs, I was a little bit disappointed at how many duplicates I yeah. was getting. Like, how many Caterpie I opened from those handful of packs. Um, and I think if I had known, it would have been cool to try to do some kind of tournament at the time yeah. with those. But And it, even though I don't like how they look, it introduced reverse hollows. Yeah, and I, I love those reverse hollows. I love that... The more you look at them, the more your eyes hurt. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, I feel like we're hovering around S for Legendary Collection. Uh, Are we about to put Legendary Collection higher than every set that came before <laughs> it? I could see it. It's got it's, those... It's got those... It does have the original artwork, again, of that you like. Charizard. Yeah. Um, I think it has Dark Blastoise, and I don't think it has a Venusaur at all, which is weird. I think it has Dark Blastoise, right? Yeah, I think it does. Because I think they didn't want to reprint Rain Dance. Mm. Yeah, probably, that makes sense. It's probably the reason because Rain Dance is such a was such a powerful mechanic. All right. Um, I can see it. Let's put Legendary Collection in S, and then let the dog with his nunchucks outside. All right, Expedition Base Set. So this is the start of the three set E Reader series. Um, although the E Readers. Capability did continue into the EX series, but mm -hmm. these were basically you could scan the cards into an e-reader which plugged into a Game Boy Advance and it would give you some extra information or something. Good points. I mean, this is going to come up for the all three of the sets. Absolutely fantastic artwork. The artwork is really it, good. E-series is like the pinnacle of incredible background art. Yeah. I think that's, and like I said earlier, I really like art where there's more than just the Pokemon on it, there's something happening in the background, and I think the three E-series are the absolute pinnacle of that. They're so, so good. Expedition loses some points because of the uh, reverse hollow issue. Yeah. Because with the EX, uh, with, sorry, the E-series, all three of them, uh, they did the thing where they duplicated the rares and the hollows. Which was fine, but it meant that the reverse hollows, they were, they were identical apart from the numbering on the card. Yeah. Um, which they did change in the later set. So I think Expedition loses some points for that. I also don't like the the actual format of the E-Series cards. Um, that's that's fair. I that's think fair that <laughs> it takes up a lot of, just like a lot of the space that could be used for artwork or mm. just don't like Yeah, it. I think it, it was something where if it had ever um, actually gone anywhere with it, that maybe it would be cooler, but I didn't see that. Um, so I feel we're hovering around B or C for Expedition. I'd probably put it at C. Okay, let's go for C. And then we move on to Aquapolis. So Aquapolis and the next set, Sky Ridge, were actually two separate Japanese sets merged together for one jumbo English set mm -hmm. because Wizards of the Coast was knew they were close to losing the license, so they were just getting as much out as possible. Aquap so the the sets, the Japanese sets, were for Aquapolis, Oof. a town on no map, and 
Wind from the Sea. I think that sounds right. And what you were saying with artwork, um, like background artwork, I absolutely love Aquapolis. Um, there's cool so much cool artwork yeah. for, uh, particularly a town on no map. And introduced crystals for the first time. We get yeah. three crystals in the set, including Crystal Lugia. Yeah. Which is incredible. They don't do reverse hollows for the crystals in this set, which is an odd decision. Mm -hmm. Or, well, doing them for this, or not for this, and for doing it for Skyridge, I think it's an odd decision. If they, if they just left them without for Skyridge as well, I think it would have been better than yeah. changing it. But I think Chris, Crystal Lugia is one of the nicest looking crystals. It is it's a really good cool. looking card, yeah. So... Where are we landing on Aquapolis, do you um, think? So, artwork-wise, I would put it in S tier. I, I think I could see bumping it down, um, but it's, it's definitely higher than Expedition. I, I think I could put it... Well, yeah, it's definitely way higher than <laughs> I could put it in S. Okay. Right, it's, it's a very cool set. Sky Ridge. Um, Sky Ridge does not do it for me like Aquapolis does. Okay. It still has, like... Similar, very good artwork. Um, Crystal Charizard again. Crystal Celebi looks gorgeous. Crystal Celebi is a very, very good looking card. Yeah, there are some good crystals. Um, there are a lot more crystals in Sky Ridge, aren't there? There are, yeah, there are six. And just three in Aquapolis. Yeah. But, like, same issue with... I don't like the, the hollow subsets. Well, so for anyone who doesn't know, Aquapolis and Sky Ridge, they numbered the hollows separately, so the hollows were numbered like H1 out of H32, etc. And they did that so that they wouldn't have reverse hollows, because they again uh, duplicated up the the hollows and the rares. And I guess any set maybe loses a little bit by duplicating the hollows and the rares, yeah. but I think the hollow subset is better than just making the reverse hollows for the hollows as well. I guess so. So... I, I think I would only be comfortable dropping it to A if we have Aquapolis in S. Oh, I would have probably put it in B. It's... Oof. Like, the, the story for Aquapolis is really what bumps it up for me. Okay. And I don't have the same, like, connection with the Sky Ridge story. I... Okay, I guess I'll go along with you, <laughs> and we'll go with B. All right, so moving on to when uh, Nintendo, TBCI, whoever took over the game from Wizards, and we're starting with Ruby Sapphire... I don't have too much experience with the early EX set, so I'm deferring to you a little bit. Um, so, for Ruby Sapphire, kind of similar to Neo Genesis, I like how it introduces the new generation of Pokemon. We get to see a lot of brand new Pokemon. Um, I really like the reverses in the set. Okay. Um, even though they're kind of garbage quality, mm -hmm. the, the rainbow pattern on the reverses for Ruby Sapphire is... Uh, I don't know, it's just pleasant to look at. Okay. I think one thing to mention with the EX series is there are codes on the bottom of them. Just, I don't know what they relate to, but each common can have three different codes, and each uncommon can have two different codes. I, th I know this goes at least up to Legend Maker. It might go all the way through the EX series. But... It's one of those ones where it makes it a challenge to collect, mm -hmm. but it's not a satisfying challenge. Yeah, it's I would it's agree not with that. like base two thousand fossil two thousand. And like we don't really know what caused the differences. Yeah, in the we codes. Do, we don't know why they're obviously the reverse hollows only have one version of the code. Like common reverse hollows, you can't get all three codes. That would be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> um, so where are you, where are you thinking, Ruby Sapphire? Where, um. Where did we put Neo Genesis? Was that A? Well, Neo Genesis is in A. I think I would put it in B because okay. it's still a, a solid intro set, but it's it's not quite the first two generations. That's fair. All right, Sandstorm. Um, Sandstorm is another set with a lot of good artwork. It's introducing the Gen Three fossils. Yeah. That was that was kind of the flagship thing of the set. Introducing the Gen 3 fossils, and uh, um, Amaldo was the pre-release promo. And I think this this is where they started putting patterns in the reverse fo foils, right? Or was that no, later? I think this, I think that's later. I think that was Magma Aqua. They started doing that. Was it that much later? And it might have been Dragon. I'm, I don't think they did for Sandstorm. I might be wrong. I thought Sandstorm was the one where they had the patterns in the back, and Dragon was the one where the patterns were in the back, and then the Pokeball was in the bottom. No, the Pokemon on the bottom was Fire Red Leaf Green. You're miles off. I'm miles off. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
So either way, Sandstorm is not that memorable because we can't remember what the reverse hall was. No. Like. I can't even think of any like real good Pokemon other than the fossils in there. D, E, uh, uh, F? E or F. Pick one. Uh let's let's get our first F on there. Alright. Okay. Dragon. Um Definite improvement over Sandstorm. Yes. Uh, Dragon has the TV reporter, right? Yep, that's the TV reporter where it is the last card in the set that would get a reverse hollow, but they just forgot to print it as a reverse hollow for the vast majority of the print runs. I think it was only the very final print run where they actually added it to the reverse hollow sheet. Whoops. And that was the print run that sold mainly in Europe. So for Americans especially, getting the reverse hollow TV reporter was really difficult. And it's it's still just miles above the rest of the reverse hollows in the sets in terms of value. So it's it's cool to have something like that in a set where mm -hmm. there's a bit of a story to it. Um, um, set also introduces Salamence. Yeah, Salamence is a nice, like, kind of popular Pokemon, like mm -hmm. one of the pseudo-legendaries, yeah. I think is what they refer to them as. So what are we thinking, maybe a C? Um, yeah, I could see that. All right. Magma Aqua. So Magma Aqua has a lot of art that is, this is one of the first sets where they really tried to do 3D um, kind of computer generated art. Right. And I hate it. Okay. I that's absolutely fair. despise it. That's fair. Uh, um, I, I really hate that they didn't stick with it too. Okay. A lot of the trainers at the end, for example, are still the 2D right. um, kind of Sugimori art. Okay. Um, and I don't, I don't like the layout of the cards. I really don't like this set. This is probably my F minus set. This is your F minus <laughs> set. Wow, I knew it was going low. I didn't think it was going that low, but as I said, I'm deferring to you on these. It was a very playable set though. Mm -hmm. 2004 Worlds, the Team Magma decks just swept. But okay, it's we're not counting playability, so it's now in F minus. Hidden Legends. Um, is this the one that introduces the Reggies? I think so, yeah. They are EXs in this set. I think it's their first appearance. And I think that's that's kind of the story of the set, is it's, um, I think they are the Hidden Legends. Makes sense. Because they are in the games you have to understand Braille and catch a Relicanth to go find them. Yeah, I, I never got that far. Yeah. Um, I think in Emerald they replaced the Braille with, like, unknowns or something. That would make so more at sense. at least you can sort of read it. <laughs> Right, you don't have to go like learn yeah. a whole new. I I do like a lot of the other artwork in Hidden Legends. I okay. believe um, the Reggies themselves are. This they have like the cracked ice foiling on the EXs. I think. They do. That's, that's so, true. I think you're, I think the artwork is good, but I don't think that artwork plays well with the no. cracked ice foiling. Yeah, maybe like a D on this one. Okay. It's like not bad, not good. It's just it exists. Okay. Uh, Fire Red Leaf Green was kind of a throwback set to the first generation. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure of all the Pokemon in it, first generation Pokemon, but they might be. So you have some very cool EXs too. You've got Charizard EX, and Blastoise has an EX in the set. Is this the set with the Ditto subset? Not subset, but... Uh, oh, you mean the Plasticine Dittos that look like the Pokemon? Yeah. That is Delta Species. Okay. This, this set had a very cool reverse holo style which you mentioned earlier when you I thought did. it was an EX Dragon. I did. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the reverses in this set. It's again a set where the reverses are absolute garbage quality. Yeah. Um, but they look real, real nice. Yeah. And this set has a, a secret rare trio of EXs of the legendary birds, which look nice too. Um, and those are the ones that have the two different foil patterns. Yeah, they're, suppo they're supposed to be the cracked ice foil, and that is what 99.99% .99 of them <laughs> are, but you can find, if you look hard enough, some Cosmo, like the regular Cosmo-style EX foiling of the legendary birds from the set. I don't know whether it was... It must have been some sort of error, or they changed it for a tiny bit of yeah. a print run or something, but you, you can find them. They're just incredibly hard to find. I think that in itself puts it above Hidden Legends. Just because of that kind of cool chase for Yeah. That. It also has a box top of Charmander, which is really cute. Yeah, that Charmander is pretty cute. Yeah. We got through EX Dragon without mentioning the uh, secret rare Charizard true. We totally <laughs> forgot about those. Whoops. Anyway, where's Fire Red Leaf Green going? Um, maybe C? Okay. I still think it could be quite harsh for some of these, but, you know, everything's, it's going to tend to the middle. Anyway, EX Team Rocket Returns. 
Um, so this is the one with the dark Pokemon, right? Yeah, it has dark Pokemon returning and very, very dark artwork. Very in the shadow heavy. You can't see the Pokemon half yeah. the time. Um, I like the I like the card design of the dark Pokemon in the set. Yeah, because a lot of them they're basically dual types, right? So they have the dark mm -hmm. in the middle and then the colors on the side. Um, is this the first time dual type Pokemon showed up? Um, I think Magma Aqua had some, right? Oh yeah, you're right. The it did. Yeah, it had some like the metal types mm -hmm. with yeah. I think all the EXs in this set are Team Rocket's Pokemon, yeah. which I'm not a huge fan of because, again, it has the like dark, shadowy artwork, yeah. and they all just... If you put them all next to each other in a binder, they aren't all popping different colors like the others would be. It just, it's all... It's very one. dark and yeah. bleh. Um, yeah, this one, I think, is pretty low for me. Okay. Um, what about where... What are you thinking? Because it seems like you're kind of back to sets where you know about where I, them. I, yeah, I, I, Unseen Forces is where I really kick back in with sets I know, but yeah, I, I was thinking an E. Yeah. I think just because on, on the basis that we're not a huge fan of the artwork, I think that's where I put it. Now, we're about to hit a two-set run where they have incredible-looking reverse hollows <laughs> and the worst quality reverse hollows ever. Like... <laughs> I think these two sets, Deox is an emerald, you can open a pack and just watch the reverse curl. You can just put it on a table and it will just curl up. <laughs> it's They're really, really bad for that. But they do look amazing. They do look really good. So, and Deoxys has the Stadium Challenge Deoxys, which is a very, very rare tournament promo card. It was, I think, said to be 50 given out. Wow. Um... It was there was just one event. There was one stadium challenge that year, uh, so it's a it is a very rare promo card. And that Deoxys, that artwork has a lot of different variants. Mm -hmm. And I think the the stadium challenge and the regional challenge look very cool because the stamp is in the lower right corner of the artwork, but Deoxys's hand is like out like that in the artwork, so the stamp is right in his hand. And those are th basically just on those two promos alone. I think it looks really cool. Yeah. But the set, the set as a whole is also a very cool set. Yeah, it's got a lot <laughs> going for it. Um, a oh, we totally of... forgot to mention that uh, Team Rocket Returns introduced gold stars. Oh. Well, maybe we should have bumped that up a little bit, but... Eh. Yeah, but they're, they're, <laughs> they're actually cool gold stars in Deoxys. Yeah. It's Rayquaza, Latius, and Latios. And they are hard to grade <laughs> because of the, the, si the and... same issues with the reverse yeah. hollows. Um, I mean, so Deoxys has not just that card of... The Stadium Challenge and the Destiny Deoxys. Yeah. So, but it's got a bunch of other forms of Deoxys, so that's really cool. I really like the stars in the set. I really do like Deoxys quite a bit. Yeah. Where are you thinking? Is this like a B? I, I was I was thinking B. That <laughs> okay. is where I was going to go. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll drop it in B. All right. The other set with the terrible reverse foils that warp is EX Emerald. So EX Emerald you can't talk about without talking about... The emerald energies. Yes, the which probably, are so good. Oh, maybe second to Call of Legends, which we'll get onto later in terms of uh, foil energies. I, there are some other sets that I prefer. Um, I think Unseen Forces foil energies. Is that? I don't think it had them. Somewhere in there. Holland Fandoms and no. Power Keepers no. had foil energies. Maybe. Unseen Forces maybe did. I might be wrong. I shouldn't think they did. Maybe, power, maybe it was Power Keepers, no. but somewhere in that area, I really like the foil energies better. But the, yeah. the emerald energies are, the I think, the first really desirable foil yeah, energy. They were very, very nice. Um, and it was the first time the energies only come in foil. Because I think that, like, Ruby Sapphire had reverse foil energies, but you could get the regular ones. Mm -hmm. But in the set, the energies only came in foil. It's also got a lot of really good artworks for cards. Yeah. Higher or the same as Deoxys? Oh, is that the question we're asking? That's kind of where I'm at. Okay, I would have. I was thinking one point lower. Okay, I would put it the same then. Okay, it also EX Emerald is the one where for some reason it didn't have gold stars. Yeah. It was like they did it for two sets and then skipped a set. But okay, we'll go same as Deoxys. Unseen forces. I love this set because <laughs> I love unknown, <laughs> and this set has a subset. Of all 28 forms of unknown, 
in foil. That subset is very cool. It is very cool. It introduces the uh, exclamation mark and question mark into the TCG, and in English it introduces unknown R, because yeah. we never got the original unknown R in English, because it was a promo card in Japan that never got translated in time before Wizards lost the license. And the rest of the set is very cool. The evolutions are, the first three evolutions are hollows in it, yeah. and it, they look great. Um, the ho and Lugia both have really nice artwork too. Um, I'm trying to think of what uh, stars are in this set. Oh, it's the dogs. It's the dogs. Oh, which yeah. The, the value is tanked on them because of one guy, but they still they look still really look cool. they still look good, yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking an A for Unseen Forces. I'm a huge Unseen Forces fan. I'll, I'll give you it. Yeah, I mean, I would. But the the A was already me uh, <laughs> pre prepping for the talk down from an S because I love <laughs> unseen forces. I'll, I'll give you an A. Okay. But also because of what's coming up. Ex Delta species. So this is this is the one that you weren't expecting. This is my set that I love um, that I don't really talk about as much. Okay. I absolutely love the idea of the changing Pokemon species. Yeah. Um, I think it had some dual types. I know that at least, like all of the evolutions are their regular type plus metal, I think. Okay. As foil in the set. And, and the dual types in this set look so good. They really, really like, do. They are, I think, the best looking dual types they have ever made. Yeah. And this is the set with the original three evolutions as EXs as well. Mm -hmm. so, I think it, I think if you're going to say S plus, I think I'm on board. Uh, yeah, this is this it's is a, my first argument for S plus. Yeah, my first argument for S plus got bumped down to an A. <laughs> but okay, we'll we'll go with it. I I can't. It's a good set. I can't think of a bad thing to say about Delta Species other than the common uncommon codes thing, which exists throughout the whole era. Right. Which you can't really mark them too much. So, okay. It's up there. All right. Hall and Phantoms. Um, similarly good, but it's it's not quite on the same level of Delta Species for me. Fair. It has those nice foil energies, which are pretty similar to the Power Keepers ones. Yeah. And it has the it has the secret of box topper Mew, that mm -hmm. is foil as a box topper, and then uh, non foil in the DVD of uh, uh, Lucario and the Mystery of Mew or whatever it's called. So, so it's, it's, it's a neat. cool yeah. it's a cool set. Um, can we maybe put it in A? Yeah. I'm not I... sure if it's an S. A Delta Species, we didn't even mention the Gold Stars, which is it's Kyogre, Groudon, and Metagross, which mm -hmm. is cool. Yeah, they're they're fine-looking cards. Yeah. Alright, Legend Maker. Very cool artwork. I don't remember what's in Legend Maker at all. Uh, Reggie's as Gold Stars. A really cute Growlithe. Forever Alone Ammonite. <gasps> I love Forever Alone Ammonite. <laughs> It does it's have some, solid. It's it, got some. It does right have stuff some good it. stuff. Yeah. I'm thinking of B. Yeah. Here's where the argument's gonna happen. <laughs> so this is my second argument for S plus. Crystal Guardians is such a good set. Yeah, if you I, like, I think I'm bringing this one down a bit. If you it's, like cards that have that tell a story and have background art. You cannot get better than Crystal Guardians. You it said is, that about Aquapolis. It is no. It is so 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 good. Like, just the whole the whole area is covered in crystals. There's crystals in every card. It's fantastic. I might let you have an S. You're not having an S plus on Crystal <laughs> Guardians. What's wrong with it? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just like I do like the artwork and stuff. It just it's not there for me like the Del like Delta Species was. I don't know. I just. It just fe it just feels like there's something missing to me. I don't know, and I don't know what it is. I could not tell you what it is. All right, I guess that's fine. All right, Dragon Frontiers. I feel like it's got some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, I just can't remember what. The the Lati EXs. This was the one where the EXs had like the flat yeah. hollow foil. Okay, there was a really cool Dragonite. I think I had that. Okay. I, yeah, I really like the the foiling on the EXs in this set. Feels like a C. Like, nothing bad with it. Nothing. Maybe a D? I could put it in D, yeah. Like, it's kind of forgettable. I Power did Keepers? Rochester draft that set once. That was kind of neat. I once Rochester drafted Shadowless Base set. Oof. <laughs> Alright. EX Power Keepers. I can think of what the set symbol looks like. I can't think of anything else about it. It's got a Vaporeon Gold Star in it. 
Okay, does that have all the Eevee gold stars? It, uh, it has the first three, and then uh, Espeon Umbreon and we're in pop five. Right. Um, yeah, those are good gold stars, especially the Jolteon. Yep. Um, well, the jo Jolteon was playable. It, it was playable, and it looks real good. Yeah, but Vaporeon's Vaporeon. So um, it is. I don't, but that might be all the set has going for it, <laughs> because I don't... I don't think any of the EXs were super memorable. There, were, there was, like, Claydol, and... I only remember Claydol because it was the first ever EX I pulled. <laughs> and... The, yeah, that's, that's the only reason I remember that. Okay. I can't think of any of the other EXs off the top of my head. Is Bennett in that set? Question mark? I thought that was Crystal Guardians. Uh, maybe. <laughs> the fact that we can't remember. <laughs> oh, is this an E? Am yeah. I, am I putting... Okay. This is an F minus set that Vaporeon Gold Star is bumping two places. <laughs> I don't know if it's that F minus, yeah. but speaking of F minus sets, no, Diamond Pearl's alright. Diamond and Pearl introduced some new Pokemon. Yep. Um, and here's the level X's, which I like the level X yeah. the secret res. Yeah, I probably should have looked at the Diamond and Pearl era sets before we started this, because now they're all blurring together for me. <laughs> Yeah, so Diamond and Pearl has, obviously has the starters, um, Dialga and Palkia are in the set, and then it's the final evolutions of the starters are the level X's for the set. And Polygon had that weird thing where it had an error on it. It was printed with a poker body instead of a poker power. Yeah. Or the other way around for half the time. C? D? What is it? I think C. Okay. So Mysterious Treasures is... Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it has secret rare time-space distortion. Which is a very, very cool card. And it introduces the Lake Trio, and I quite like the Lake Trio. But They're pretty... The, the, those original Lake Trio artworks were pretty generic, though, right? Uh, yeah, they weren't over-the-top good. And their level Xs weren't for a couple of sets. So yeah, I think maybe E. I think Time Space Distortion is all that the set really has going for it. All right. The level Xs for this one were Magmorta, Electivire, and Lucario. I mean, Lucario's... Cool, I guess. And got a tin promo <laughs> immediately after the set was released. Oh, yeah. All right. Secret Wonders. You're not going to argue with me on this one. Secret Wonders is an all right set. It's not terrible, but it's going in F- minus because someone thought it would be a good idea to hold back seven reverse hollows from the set and make them only available in a pro blister promos. <laughs> And that, and nothing else that this set does can forgive that, because that was the worst decision anyone's ever made. Uh, F minus, move on. <laughs> right. Great encounters. Darkrai was like, it was like the flagship introduction of Darkrai. Heatran? Uh, no. Not Heatran? Heatran was Legends Awakened, I, I mean, not, not introduction, but I think he was in the set. No, because I think his introduction was Legends Awakened, wasn't it? What? I thought that there was a, a theme deck for him for Great Encounters. No, there was one for Legends Awakened. All right. The theme decks for Great Encounters, were, there were three <laughs> theme decks for Great Encounters. There were Dialog, Apalkia, Darkrai. Mm. Then so I don't remember those theme decks at all. Yeah, I think the set was fine, but not great. So I think it's maybe a D. Okay. That's where I'm going to put it. All right, we're on to Majestic Dawn. Love, love this set. Love it. Uh... Uh, Leafeon Glaceon? Induce Leafeon and Glaceon um, with their level X's. The Leafeon level X was like incredibly playable. Le uh, Glaceon level X was the first card I ever sold because I pulled two of them and Ooh. eBayed it off for £26. Nice. Spell. It was pretty Not good. Not bad. And um, it has the stadium in it, and it's what's called Dawn Stadium or something, where it's the two of them running. Mm. That stadium looks really cool. And it has it has the other evolutions in it too. It's a very cool set. I love the set. Um, are we thinking S plus? Can we think of anything against Majestic Dawn? What do the reverses look like? I mean, the it's still just flat. They're just reverses. flat reverses. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the only. It's not even really a negative. It's just like because I mean, that's a, again that's exciting. a thing that happens over the whole era. Yeah. So. Um. I, I. Yeah. I guess. All right. We're putting Majestic Dawn is our second S plus set. Legends Awakened. So this was the Heatran one. Okay. Uh, it had also all of the forms of Deoxys. Okay. Uh, who else was the... I'm trying to think who the other theme deck was. It was Regigigas. Heatran oh, and Regigigas yeah. okay. were the introduced in this one. I like Regigigas. Was this the first time we saw Regigigas? Yeah. 
I feel like the the artwork in this set is one of those ones where it's it's fine. Yeah, this was the one where the uh, the Lake Trio had their level X's. Okay. And it had the super playable Uxie, but we're not counting that. But just everyone likes the Uxie, and the uh, his elf was playable too. Yeah. Um. So this is like a C. Okay. Higher, I, lower? I think I was thinking B, but I can go for a C. Okay. All right. And now on to the only set that shares its name with, like, white power nationalist websites, Stormfront. <laughs> At least its full name is Diamond and Pearl Stormfront. Diamond and Pearl Stormfront. Um, so a huge thing for the set is the secret rares, the reprints of Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard. Yes. With the new, like, 3D artwork, yeah. which I really liked. And Stormfront is where we started the subset of shiny Pokemon. I love that. There was, them. like, the three river... Like, the next... F- Three or four sets, I think, um, up to Supreme Victors that each had three reverse hollow shiny Pokemon, um, which were numbered separately, so those were cool. Other than that... I really Cobra. liked some of the Pokemon in Stormfront, the Gyarados okay. especially. Yeah, um, uh, well, that was the super playable one, right? Yeah, it was... Where it was doing 90 for no dam- for no energy. Yeah, super playable, but it's also it is cool a good-looking yeah, card. A, I think there's a lot of the... The artwork in that one is cool. I'll I'll say that. Um, what are we thinking? Like a B, maybe an A. I could put it in A. Okay. I mean, I mean, I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. Platinum. Um, we introduced some stuff. Did we? No. No, we didn't. <laughs> uh. I mean, there was. I, yeah, I think all of the Pokemon had been introduced by then. Oh no, Shaman might have been. I think this might have been the first Shaman. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And that was this Shaman level X. Or was he later? Ah, uh, ooh. No, this was Shaman Level X. That's yeah. a good... I like Shaman Level X. Yeah. This one also had the really weird Dialga, where it was a metal type, but the reverse hollow was colorless. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite funny. That's pretty neat. Um, yeah. But it, it's not a collectible era, because right. it was never corrected, just all of the reverse hollows are colorless. It's just kind of a neat story. Um, it did have a Dialga Level X that later on got an error when it was printed as a... It was re-released as a promo in one of those promo boxes, but with the original printing. But uh, the what do I think of the weakness and resistance were washed out so they were the wrong colours. So that's that's kinda neat. I'm thinking of B. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Now Rising Rivals I really, has the Rotom subset. Oh uh, yeah, I really like Rising Rivals. It's um, very cool. Oh and it has the it has the Oh Platinum we didn't mention had the secret rares of Scyther, Electabuzz, Hitmon Chan. It's kinda mm. cool. This one had the secret rares of, like, a base set Pikachu, flying Pikachu, surfing Pikachu. I love those. And, yeah, the, it has the Rotom subset, so there's a there's six cards with the cracked ice foil only appear like that. It's the five new forms of Rotom, plus uh, Charon's Choice as a supporter that does something with Rotom, but I don't Is know it what. pronounced Charon? I don't know. So, uh, I think I'd throw the set up to an A for that, because I think it's... Is this, is Rising Rivals um, where Luxray was? Yes, Luxray Level X, the bane of player's existence. And that was the, the expensive card at the time. So, I'm not a huge fan of the Level X, but the, the baby of the Luxray, I really like the art of. Yeah, and then I think this is where... Was it this one or Platinum where the gym leader... Oh, Platinum, I think, is where the gym leader Pokemon started coming in. So yeah. stuff like Luxray was a basic instead of being a stage two. Mm-hmm. I, so, yeah, I, I I would go A there. You go A? I think I'm good with that. Okay. Supreme Victors, I think, is the very forgettable one of the Platinum series. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of... It's a big set with not a lot going on. Much else to say? Or do we just put it as an E or an F? Uh, I think it's an F. That's fair. Then jumping back up, Platinum Arceus is a nice set. Uh, yeah, um, I love the subset for yeah, Arceus. Yeah, there's, there's the nine f- t- different types of Arceus, and it has like the circles in the middle, so if you line them all up, it has an outgoing motif of all the... I've only done that like once, and it was <laughs> really satisfying. Yeah. Um, other than that subset, what else is in... That is a good question. I feel like there's something good in it. <laughs> well, there's, the, there's a few Arceus level X's. Right, yeah, there's, there's like three. Th- there's three of them. One of them was decent. Um, there was a couple of other level X's, but I can't remember what they are. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I love the set, but I think I just love the Arceus subset. Yeah. It, I'm sure it was fine. There were some trainers and stuff that went with Arceus. I think it's probably middle of the pack, then. You think C? it's C? Yeah. Sure. 
Now we enter my favourite era of the TCG, Heart Gold Soul Silver. By introducing primes, we're introducing legend cards, which are two part cards. So you have a top half and a bottom half, and you have to play them together. So it's cards where the top half was basically all artwork, the bottom half would have attacks, and the top of it was still artwork and stuff on there. Very, very cool. Um, Secret Prime. Pika was in Heart Gold Soul Silver, wasn't he? No. What are there you... wasn't a... Was there a secret in... Oh, was it the Unknowns? What are you talking about? It was a red Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> this... Were the Unknowns in Heart Gold Soul Silver? I think there was a couple, but they didn't... They weren't by letter. No, the... There was a couple that would spell out words. Yeah, the, the ones at Alf the end. Alphithograph is what you're you. thinking of. It's Thank a tra- you. It's a trainer card where the text was written in Unknowns. Yeah. Yeah, there was that. Um... The secret of Pikachu is black and white, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> for... My brain just turned off. It's fine. Yeah. So the one of the really cool things that I like about the whole Heart Gold Soul Silver era is in the artwork. If you get a Pokemon that evolves from like a stone oh, yeah. or a special a, item, has them in the, the items in the artwork, yeah. and that was so so cool. One thing I really like is the borders as well. Yeah. Because the borders, instead of just being a standard yellow, were like a, a gold silver mix, and they they, they kind of fade looked, in. It they looks looked really, really good. cool. They look better than just like the garish yellow of the. Other borders. Yeah. So Heart Gold Soul Silver is also one of the first sets that I ever like completed a master set of, um, and did it by buying packs at Toys R Us. <laughs> so it's it's a very kind of it's like a, nostalgic set yeah. for me. Um, so it's and it's it, up there. For it me. had those basic energies with the incredible. It artwork. did. Yeah. They only came in non hollow in this, but they look really nice. They have like um, it's the energy symbol, and then a a silhouette of a Pokemon of that type, and then, like, a silhouette of a skyline or of a place in mm-hmm. Johto. So cool. Can we put this in S? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Do we even... I, I want to hold S plus for Call of Legends, I think, for... <laughs> so, spoiler alert, but I'm going to fight my corner on that one. All right, so the next three Heart Gold Soul Silver sets, I think, take a little bit of a step down from mm-hmm. Heart Gold Soul Silver, but they are... Still very cool sets. I think, um, like, if if we're considering them all together, I think Triumphant is higher than the other two. Okay. Um, I was going to go Undaunted being the best. Uh, Undaunted has the Eevees, right? It has the Espion number on, yeah. And it um, has... I, I think it ha- I think the, um, the Uncommons of Vapor and Jolly and Flareon are in Undaunted as well, yeah. I just remember Triumphant being the set that I wanted to open packs for. Um, I don't remember what was in Triumphant. I think I know, that had Young Mega. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, that had playable stuff. Yeah. And Young Mega Magma Zone. But I also really liked Yonma and Young Mega. Okay. I think fair. partially because I really liked playing with Young yeah. Mega, but. I think we're all agreeing Unleashed was the worst of the three. Yeah. But it's still a good set. Yeah. Because it still has primes, it has it has the dogs as legends, like paired up in the three. Yeah, those. I really liked those. Yeah. So do we? Look, should we put Unleashed as a B, and then the other two as A's? I could see that. I'm happy with that. So we said we said Unleashed was going as a B. Yeah. Unleashed actually had a lot of promos for tournaments too, because they had it the, did, yeah. the Blastoise line was all tournament promos. Mm-hmm. But we'll put Undaunted and Triumphant up in A, because we like those. Alright, Call of Legends, S+. Plus. That secret rare, the shiny subset of the 11 legendaries in their shiny forms, incredible. Reverse hollows of the energies we spoke about with Heart Gold, Soul Silver, incredible. The thing that brings Call of Legends down for me a little bit okay. is that it it is essentially a reprint set. Um... And the artworks, so the artworks are different. Some of it's a reprint set. It, it is primarily a reprint set. There's there very was some, there few... were some key Pokemon because a lot of all of the Lost Zone stuff got put into it. Like all of the Japanese mini Lost Link set mm-hmm. that ended up in there. So all of like the Lost Remover and, and basically the stuff that made the Lost Zone a thing was all in there. Pachirisu was not a reprint. No, Pachi there. was not. Pachi was a very, very big player for a while. But the... So you've got, like, 
two nine tails, for example. I think there's two nine tails, right? Maybe. In the set? No, not in the set. In, there's a Call of Legends nine tails. And a Hot Gold Soul Silver. Hot Gold Soul Silver. Yeah. And the artworks for them are very similar. They're similar styles. Um, that's kind of the only thing that brings it down for me is you're looking at a lot of almost pretty much the same cards as in the previous I'll draw it to sets. an S and no lower. I, I'm okay with a, that. It's <laughs> very good set. Right, onto some absolute trash for a minute. <laughs> I mean, I know Black and White and just new Pokemon, but good lord. Secret Pika. Sure. And full art Rash Ram and Zekrom. That's a good point. Yeah. Up to it. That's points up to it. Um, Andrews' full arts for the first time. Seeing where that's at now, whether that was definitely a good thing. Is a... <laughs> Maybe not, but... Yeah. It also had so many extra cards to be part of the Master Set. Yeah. Like, it is, compared to the sets we have now, it's relatively okay. small. It's like 120-ish cards, maybe. And there's like 60 extra things. I sort of like that. I think it's too. it was too many, and a lot of them didn't change enough. It's like there was three or four different versions of each of the starters. I don't know, where are you putting it? Um. I want to say D, I think. Yeah. You okay with D? Yeah. All right, Emerging Powers, F minus. Yeah. T t full Art Tornadus and Thunderous looked kind of cool. That's all the set is going for it. Meowth? Nope, that's Noble Victories. That's Noble Victories. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yeah, Emerging Powers, garbage. Speaking of Noble Victories. Victini. Full Art Victini. Uh, full Art N, first Full Art Supporter. Full Art Supporters are always great. I absolutely love them. And that N is, I think, my favorite. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very nice artwork. It's definitely better than the uh, other full art, the um, that was in that box thing, the like big hundred dollar box oh, with yeah. twelve cards in it or something. The like X Y best yeah. of collection or whatever. And the uh, the other full arts in the set were the three, uh, the three musketeers. Yeah. They look nice too. D. Sure. I mean, it's the, it's another one where there's some good stuff going for it, but. This, like, this generation of Pokemon was just not... Fair. Fair. <laughs> uh, next Destinies. Start of the new EX era. Mewtwo EX. Sure. That is a... That's it. <laughs> it has, that is the setting that has... No, it's not. I was thinking Dark Explorers. I was just saying it has the Vaporeon that has all those... That's Dark Explorers. Dark Explorers. Yeah, so Mewtwo EX. And that's it. <laughs> Is is he E worthy? He might be E worthy. <laughs> Dark Explorers is the one I was thinking of when I said Vaporeon. Dark Explorers, I think, has an argument for being one of the best black and white era sets. It has Darkrai in it. it Darkrai, which is the Darkrai EX, which was not only playable but like real spooky art. Yeah. Um, the Evolutions. Yep. With. Well, Vaporeon, I mentioned it has. They did uh, tournament promos of the evolutions for the black and white era. So Vaporeon has a regular version, a staff version of uh, it was for states, and they did it for states. But then outside of the US, they don't have states. Right. So they have they just have it called it's just regionals again. I, th I think that's what's on the stamp. I haven't looked at it in the longest time. But I don't it's, think it's regionals. It's just. Ter it's something Territory, else. Territory, something weird. It's something else. There's basically <laughs> two versions of Vaporeon and Leafeon, uh, where the more common one is the purple stamp, and the rare one is the orange stamp. And the Vaporeon orange stamp is a lot rarer than the Leafeon orange stamp. And the staff version of that is the rarest Vaporeon in existence. And as I love Vaporeon, so I think it gets points there with a set where, as a promo, it has the rarest Vaporeon ever. Um, it also had, uh, as a set called Dark Explorers, it had a lot of dark types. Yeah, it, I think of... introduced Zoroa, which is one yeah. of my favorite Pokemon. Yep. Um, so it's it's a higher upset for me for okay, sure. Okay, are we going A or B? Um, I think I think B. Okay. It's not that good. Okay. All right. We next have Dragons Exalted. What were the dragons? That we were exalting. Oh. Uh, was this the introduction of Dragon? Yes, this was the first Dragon type set. Okay. Which I think is a cool thing. Yeah. Um, but off the top of my head, I don't remember. I think it was a was there a really playable Flygon? Mm, I want to say. I think maybe. Flygon was in the set. I don't know. 
Would make sense. This was the last set I actually bought stuff before I, I took a break from sets for a while. Um, up until uh, you started doing sets for me. <laughs> um, I feel like there's like a Hydragon. Yeah, Hydragon I think was a really playable one. Um, but yeah, I, I think the only thing it really has going for it is, is the it introduction of dragon dragons. type. So C, D? What do you think? D. D, okay. Dragon Vault. Um, it's our first mini set that we're looking at. Yeah. Had 20 cards plus one secret rare. The secret key room? Yep, it was only sold in blisters, which came with three, uh, I think, five card packs. Sounds right. And then a promo, which was one of the cards in the set with the, with the set logo on it. Um, I think the whole set was hollow. Yeah. Introduced first ticket, which is a card which is now unplayable because it doesn't work with the tournament rules. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it was it was kind of cool as a mini it set. Was, it was a cool mini set. It was not a bad release, um, and some of the artwork for the set is phenomenal. Yeah, it has one of my favorite Dratini arts. I think I like it. Okay, well, a C maybe, or you want, you want higher? I would maybe go B. Okay, we'll go B. Uh, boundaries crossed. Introduced Keldeo. Yeah. Uh, started the Ace Specs. And had computer search, which is nice. I like how I like how the A specs look. Yeah. And computer search was a really nice one to bring back. Other than Caldeo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It had the. Was this the first um, black Kyurem, white Kyurem? But they're not. They're not too exciting. They're just fused Pokemon. Yeah. I don't know. Should we put this in an E? Because it's got some okay stuff going for it. Yeah. All right, and then here are the three sets that really blend together for me on the three <laughs> plasmas. Because Plasma Blast, I know, is the Genesect one. Yeah. Because that has some cool stuff going for it. It's the introduction of Genesect. And the other two just have nothing. So, Plasma... And they have some more A specs and stuff, but... Yeah. Plasma it's... Freeze has um, some good artwork in it. I think all of the plasma sets kind of share this a little bit, but Freeze in particular has a lot of the artwork where um, in Black 2, White 2, some of the region has frozen over. Yeah. Um, so it's got a lot of like icebergs and like snow in the background. So that's kind of the, the thing that I would say Freeze in particular has going for it. Um, also, one Which of these... one's the one with full art colorist? <laughs> I was just going to say, one of these sets has colorist. Full art colorist looks nice. I the think that's gold, freeze. The golden ultra ball looks nice, whichever. I think, But I think the fact that we can't distinguish them apart yeah. is... Which, I mean, it might be a bit on us, but I think there's a bit on the set. So should we put should we put Storm in F? Yes. Because I think we agree that Storm is bad. I'm pretty sure freeze is the one with colorist. I, mean, I think I would only up it to, like, an E, though. So I think maybe put Freeze and Blast in E. Okay. Now we come on to one of the most frustrating sets <laughs> in Legendary Treasures. So the reason it's one of the most frustrating sets is that there's only a Reverse Hollow in, like, one in every other pack. Yeah. If that, because of the... Um, the radiant, sh radiant collection, collection subset, or whatever. which is like thirty-two cards. Yeah, um, which they looked cool. The golden Reshiram and Zekrom looked cool. Yeah, but the fact that not every pack has a reverse hollow in it for a full-size set is a little irritating. Yeah, I think it it really puts me off that set. So I really like the Radiant Collection subset. The Radiant Collection set is cool. Um, I, I mean, I think if we were ranking Radiant Collection separate from Legendary Treasures, it would be really high. Yeah, but, but I think that that bumps Legendary Treasures up a little bit for me. Well, yeah, but it was starting in F minus for me, so <laughs> bumping it up a little bit isn't going very far. Um, I I meant maybe like like I would have maybe put it at a C, but I could Good see Lord. going lower. I mean. I don't. I think while the Radiant Collection is cool, it's such a small part of the set. I guess so. And do, just doesn't do enough for me. I think I would put it as an F. Can we go E? I guess so. <laughs> okay, so we're into X Y. Thoughts? Um, X Y starters were Fennec and Chespin Froakie, right? Yes. Okay, so I like Fennec. I like Froakie. I don't like anything else <laughs> in XY. 
Okay. XY is one of the sets where I was still taking a break from buying sets or having yeah. sets completed. So, yeah, I don't know if there's anything memorable. Um, um, it was still on, it was sticking with EXs at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Like it didn't start anything new. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was going on with full arts in that set? Can you remember? Uh, there were some of them. <laughs> Okay. I think. Probably the starters, question mark? Uh, genuinely no idea. That's how unmemorable the set is, I guess. Is that even Fennec and Chespin Froki? When was Lytton? Lytton, Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, I guess it's pretty low. Probably. Alright, so what, are we even saying an F? Because we're just so unmemorable, we don't yeah. remember it. Yeah, yeah. Alright, well, now we come on to uh, some Charizards. Charizard yeah. the set. <laughs> There's, what, like seven Charizards or something in There's here? There's a lot of Charizard in Flashfire. Um, that just reminded me we didn't mention the Secret Rare Charizard in whichever Plasma set it's in. Oh, yeah. Because there's one of them. I think that one's Blast. Maybe? No idea. There's <laughs> the error in it, though. Yeah. Alright, so... Yes, yeah, so many different Charizards with all those different forms and everything. But other than that, is it a good set? It's got four out Lysander. Um, That's all I can remember from it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Charizard the set, so it gets to go up above some of the other junk that is XY. Not that high, I don't think. D? Sure, yeah, I'm there. I guess neither of us are huge Charizard fans. Yeah, I mean, you he's, like him, he's my favorite him. starter, but... Yeah. Furious Fists. Um... Mega Lucario, the set. Yeah? I don't know, it's it's another one that's just not super memorable. Yeah. Right. I think a lot of the XY stuff is really, really weak. Yeah. I, I genuinely think XY might be the, the lowest era. Probably. I would agree with that. Maybe like, we can do a video later ranking the eras. It'll be a lot quicker. <laughs> yes. Are we, should we just put Furious Fists in E? F? I think F. Because it's just not memorable. Yeah. <clears throat> Phantom Forces? Phantom Forces has some cool stuff. Okay. Um, it's good, a lot of based around ghost types. And yeah. Stuff so it's got like the... Um, Pump Kaboo and stuff. Yeah. He's in it, yeah. And the, I think Trevenant was in it. Um, okay. So I, I think it's it's certainly better than some of the other sets. Okay. Um, and it's got kind of a cool storyline that it's trying to follow. So we're maybe going to throw it in a, a C maybe? Is yeah. it better than Flashfire? Uh, yeah, I would say it's better than Flashfire. Cool. Uh, Primal Clash. Now this did start doing something a bit interesting with like the, the extended art Primal Pokemon I think started in this set. Yeah. So there, there's some aesthetic value to it. Yeah, um, I did like the ex uh, extended arts. Uh, there's a Kyogre Grout on set, so. Yeah. Hello. So it was decent. I think we, we can maybe put this one in C again. Okay. I yeah. think it's not, again, doesn't jump out. Now, I'll take it. So now we move on to uh, Double Crisis, which is another mini set. I really, really like this set. Really? Yeah. So it's a Team Magma Aqua base set, and what it's a like 32 card set, something like that. Um, and it has all regular regular set plus reverses. But what really makes it is that there are two EXs in the set. There's the Team Magma's Groudon and the Team Aqua's Kyogre, which have the main Pokemon, and then just surrounded by other water Pokemon or um, fighting Pokemon or ground mm -hmm. Pokemon. And they, I think they just they look so good. I think those two cards really do it and the rest of the set is not bad it's a it's really nice it's really heavily themed which you can do when it's such a small set so i would honestly say an a for this one wow um, i think i how, I how much lower do you want to drag it? i don't think i was expecting that <laughs> um i just i really really like how this set looks i like the exs i don't really like anything else about the set okay to be honest um how, how far down are you pulling my A? <laughs> I, it was not as memorable for me, I okay. guess. Um, I would have probably put it at about a D, because it does have some cool D. stuff going on. 
Wow. Yeah. So either a B or a C. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I'll give you a B on it. Okay, I'll take that. Yep. Moved to a giant B category. Yep. All right, uh, Roaring Skies, a.k.a. the Shaman Lottery. Yeah, um, or also had Rayquaza. Did have Rayquaza. Um, and I love that Shaman. Um, well, it was for multiple reasons, very obviously. Playable, very, very playable, very cute. Um, the, full, the full art Shaman did look really nice, too. I was also in a... I got conferenced in on a phone call when that Shaman dropped... Um, like when it was spoiled? Yeah, when it was spoiled, and we were trying to translate it, so I was, <laughs> uh, I think, one of the first people who kind of knew what the shaman oh, was nice. going to do. Um, so there, there's a lot of just cool stuff about that particular card. Was that Bulbapedia people getting in touch with you? Too? Yeah. Um, and Royce Guys also is the set with the uh, the really red Dragonite era. Because mm -hmm. the, So the Dragonite is a hollow in the set, and it had a theme deck exclusive that was non-hollow, and in a very, very small amount of the theme decks, it was listed as a stage one instead of a stage two. So that is a, that is something really cool. So if you're looking to put together a master set and you want the errors in there, it's that's a, a, it's a up, very yeah. hard one to pick up. It's a nice challenge to try and get. And again, so. I think that this is another set with like a good story to it. Um, yeah, I didn't really see too much of the story in this one. It's So it's, it's roaring skies. There's a lot of birds. There's a lot of things what fly well i mean I, so so it's more of a theme than a story yeah yeah okay um so what are you thinking are you thinking b c uh, yeah I, i'd go happy uh, you'd go happy <laughs> okay <laughs> i'd be happy to go b okay uh ancient origins um so more extended arts it's just repeating more of the same though really isn't it yeah. i don't think it's like, I don't think it's adding too much. Like, mm -hmm. Roaring Skies added some nice, interesting stuff. F. Yeah, alright. I just, I don't think it's adding much. Now, if we want to talk about cool stories, the break sets were a kind of cool story. It was like two worlds colliding. Oh, you could, yeah. You could see it in the artwork where there were portals opening up to, like, parallel worlds. Mm -hmm. And they introduced the break cards, which were cards printed sideways that you put over the top of your Pokemon, gave them, like, boosted HP, extra attacks. Mm -hmm. So it was adding something new. There was a nice story there, and it was nicely represented in the cards, I thought. Yeah. Um, but the story is the good thing about the card art. Yeah. I think without the story behind it, I think the card art falls a bit. I think the cards where you can see that clash of worlds are really good. I think the yeah. rest of them... I'm talking about both break sets here, too. I think if they fall down a bit. Breakthrough has an interesting error set where all of the breaks you can get printed upside down because they're printed sideways, so you can get them basically printed where they're facing left or right yeah. um, with the back facing the right way up. So that's a little bit interesting, but I don't think either of the sets is really doing too much. Yeah, where do you think that puts them? Um, through at a C, point at a D. Yeah, I could see Because I think through gets a little bit more just because of the interesting era story, but... Yeah, definitely. Generations. So... The set that should have been Evolutions. Yeah. Um, I really liked Generations. Um, I really liked a lot of the hype around the set. I didn't like that they made it standard legal and released it the way they did. That's fair. So for everyone who's, people who don't play... Cards go into standard three weeks after they're released. Generations was a set where it was being released over the course of a year in different products, starting with just the only thing you could get, first of all, was a Mew pin collection, where it had three boosters and a Mew promo and a pin. Um, so that, And you couldn't buy boosters separately for these, right. like a lot of the other subsets. So for players... I know, I know we're not judging us on playability, but players, like, those Mew pin boxes just went out, the first print room just out, because Jolteon EX was, really was a good, very yeah. playable card. So people were just going mad trying to get the Jolteon. And play, so players had to be jumping on it, because even though 90% of the stuff that was coming hadn't been released, it still became standard legal. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it was supposed to be a nostalgia set, while I love the set, it didn't hit the nostalgia factor in the way Evolutions did. That's fair. 
Evolution should have been released in the way Generations was, and, and Generations, Generations should have just been, been a regular set. set. Yeah. Because Evolutions didn't really add much playable, I don't think, either. It was just a very cool nostalgic set where with original artwork, original border layouts, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that bumps Generation down quite a bit from where it would be. Ooh, um... But, like, think of all the good things with Generations, so... Oh, I'm not saying put it low, I'm saying yeah. just it's not... It's not like an, an S. No, I was thinking it would maybe be an A. Okay. Um, some of the other stuff I liked about Generations is... So those, those sets that were coming out, like, starting with the Mew, um, there was a plush and a figure release alongside it. Yeah, but I think once we start taking those into account, we're getting too far away from the actual TCG sets. I, I guess, but it's just, it's one of those things about like why Generations was so cool for us in particular to collect because we do collect Yeah, I, but I still think even that I don't think saves it compared to the problems I had with it. Uh... I really liked Generations, but I'm happy to, to I put said, it at an I, I'm A. I'm saying put it, put it in an A. I'm not saying bring it down really low. Okay. But... All right, Fates Collide. Uh, What's it doing? Nothing. Anything? No, nothing. I, I would almost put Fates Collide at an F minus. I, I did I'm not, not going to put Fates Collide at an F minus because of what's coming after Fates <laughs> Collide. Uh, I just, I really didn't like Fates Collide. I think we put Fates at an F. Okay. And... Then... and <laughs> And then talk about the next set. Nope, let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Steam Siege does have um, the the dual types. Yeah. And that's <laughs> it's, that's what it has. It is. It is. Steam Siege has literally become like a buzzword for terrible set. <laughs> like it, it's just the. It's like a running joke. It's practically a meme at this point of how bad Steam Siege is. I think... And, and mm -hmm. we got it in a sealed product a couple of months ago. <laughs> Steam Siege... <laughs> like, Evolutions we also did, but Evolutions has other saving factors. Steam Siege was terrible, and we're still getting it. Yeah. I put Secret Wonders in there because of the blister decisions. <laughs> Steam Siege <laughs> is staying there. Yeah, I mean, the... The dual types in the set are probably the worst looking dual types that they've come up with. Yeah, because it just cuts the card in half. The the one other good thing, though, is that I think the dual types in that set were also shinies. Yes, but they were just regular uncommons right. or whatever. So it's not like... So, I they mean, didn't it was like special. an easy way to get shiny Pokemon if that's a thing that you like. Yeah, but I, I think it then makes them feel less special. Alright, well, I tried Steam Siege, but you're gone. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Alright, Evolutions. So, I think it's kind of cool. I think I like it more than most people do. It Yeah, I, I think you like it more than I do. Um, Probably. It's, it's an okay set. It's a cool nostalgia set. Um, it shouldn't have been released as a main... No. Set of the TCG. It should have been like a supplemental thing. It is also the hardest master set to complete. Period. Why English. is that? Because you have four different one of six cards. So they. Re this was the first time that they did um, the ICs, the Intercontinentals or the Internationals or whatever they call them now. And they did a DC from the set was the promo for it. So you had a, spec a regular competitor one, which just had the stamp of the event. It just said, the first one was in Europe, just said internationals. Uh, or it might have said intercontinentals, I don't remember which it actually said. Then there was a staff version. Then there was a one stamp top eight. And then there was one stamp champion. So at that event, there were six copies of the champion one given out. Now, obviously, we knew there were three more intercontinentals coming throughout the year. So we were like, okay, well, this one, it just says intercontinentals. Surely it's going to be the same promo. Right. But it wasn't. We then went to Oceana next, and that one said Oceana on the stamp. And again, had regular staff, top eight, champion. And then Latin America. And then North America. Yeah. So if you want to complete, if you want to fully, truly complete the Master Set of Evolutions, you need four different champion cards each of which only has six copies in existence. I know a guy just, just trying to get the champion cards, and he's stuck at three. Can't get the fourth. <laughs> it is... And there were obviously other intercontinentals, but in future years, 
they localize the language. So there are, if you're just going for the English master set, which is what most people would go for, um, the Ultra Bowl, you only need the European one, the North American one, the Oceania one. You don't need the Latin America one because it's all Spanish. In some um, European ones, they were in German? Not the Ultra Bowl. Not the Ultra Bowl? Yeah. Okay. And then after that, the next one was Choice Band, where the uh, European one was in German mm. and the Latin American one was in Spanish. So you would only need uh, two, one of six yeah. uh, pro champion stamped oh cards. And then this year, it's Pokemon Communication, and the Latin American one is in Spanish. We've already seen that one. We don't know about the European one. The North American one is obviously always going to be English. Mm -hmm. The Oceana one must should always, should always be, be English. English. And then the European one, I imagine it's going to depend on where they host it. Mm -hmm. So I think Evolution gets some points for being the true collector challenge if you want to go for that. But, you know, I don't think it's going to go up too high. Okay. I think there's some cool stuff in it. The full art trainers look all right. Yeah. The uh, the five secret rares that are actually un in the uncommon slot all look cool. You've got Imakuni's Doduo, the uh, bilingual executor, and then the flying Pikachu, surfing Pikachu. Team Rocket. Team Rocket. Here comes. Here Team comes Rocket. Team Rocket. That one. So I think the set's all right. It's got some cool stuff in it, but it's not going too high. Are we thinking B or C? C, I think. C, that's fair. Also, even if you decide to ignore the uh, champion stamp cards, you have a staff Charizard to deal with. Yes. All right, well, we've now doubled the season. We now no longer see our sets, so I'm going to have to move this down a little bit. All right, we're at Sun and Moon. So, Litten, <clears throat> Poplio, Rowlet. Yeah. Um, so GXs. Yeah, start of GXs. Introduce Rainbow Res, too. Yeah, I think I like some of the stuff that Sun and Moon the TCG did, and it's really hard for me to um, not kind of take it down because of how much I hated the Sun and Moon games. Right. Um, but I think as far as like starting an era, Sun and Moon was, was pretty solid. Um, I yeah, would I mean, maybe even... And Rainbow Rares are cool the first time you see them. Yeah, the first time you see them, Rainbow Rares <laughs> When you open your first awesome. Rainbow Rare, wow, it looks good. Then when you see your 10th one, you go, oh, this looks the same. Yeah, yeah. And you can't tell the Pokemon apart in a binder. That's a little rough. But, and judges can't tell them apart unless they're staring right at the table. But the first time, you know, yeah. um, I, I think I could maybe go as high as an A, maybe a B. Ooh, I'm not putting an A. Okay. <laughs> we'll right. do a B. All right. Uh, Guardians Rising. Um, Tapu Lele? I mean, that's just a playable card. That's the only thing I can think of yeah. in that uh, Some of these early sets as well, they did have the um, secret rare golden energy cards, the basic energies. That's true. So those were pretty cool. I actually like those. Um, those are like some very highly desirable basic energies. But I don't think it's enough to save a terrible set. No. Um, were all the Tapus in Guardians Rising? Is that where... That must be where the Tapus got introduced. Because uh, they're the island I, guardians. I don't think all of the GXs were in there. But I think all of the regulars maybe made an appearance, but I don't think all of the GXs did. Okay. Because I'm sure, I'm sure Feeny is in Burning Shadows, at least. So, I mean, those are kind of neat. Yeah. It has all the Oricorios are in. Um, I do like Oricorio. Yeah, I think all four versions of Oricorio are in Guardians Rising for the first time. Okay. So... Um, I still think it's probably not as good as Sun and Moon. So it's maybe a C. Yeah. Charizard lottery ticket. Yeah. Um, I I hate this set. <laughs> I was going to say, let's just throw it in like an is, F. We're going to hit Crimson Invasion. And overall, Crimson Invasion is technically sort of a worse set because it doesn't even have the Charizard. But I think I prefer that because when you get one secret rare that is up top yeah massively valuable it drives the rest of them down in price so at least with something like crimson if you're opening a case or whatever and you know you're getting four or five uh secrets or whatever you're getting they're all going to be about the same level in price so whatever you get you're going right. to knock off the same amount even if they're all garbage like well they are all garbage <laughs> if you open crimson invasion yes. but with burning shadows it's so much rides on whether you hit that Charizard or not. Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, even with Charizard, I'd throw it in an F, I think. Yeah. Okay. But before we hit Crimson Invasion, we come to another subset. Shining Legends. I really like this subset. I would like to put it in S+. 
Wow. I think it is far and away the best set we have had in a long time. So you have the Shining Pokemon. There was like six Shining yeah. Pokemon in the set. Looked great. They were... Uh, they were pretty rare. They're pretty rare. Yeah. It's again another one where you had to buy um, like boxed products. You couldn't just buy booster packs and you couldn't buy a booster box. But yeah, it was so cool. And the secret rare Mewtwo. That's true. That's it, it has the Mewtwo probably in its the tube. Best card that we've gotten. That is that is probably that's going to be at least top ten cards of the Sun and Moon era. Yeah. So I can't think of a reason to put it any lower than S plus. I think it is a fantastic set. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think I can think of anything either. I just kind of wasn't expecting it. I I didn't know where I was gonna go with it, but I and can the, see it. I know this doesn't technically count, but the box sets that it came in had some very cool promos too, because you got like Shining Celebi and Shining Lugia with some of the promos. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm yeah I'm putting S plus. It's a very very good set. And then there's Crimson Invasion. Let's put that in an E and move on. <laughs> Ultra Prism. The notoriously short printed set. Yeah. Had one print run and then never got reprinted. I think yeah. that would put it at an F- minus for me, just for it being yeah, so... Yeah, like, the reason they didn't do it is because they made a misprint in the first print run, was, I think, the reason they said it was going to get reprinted to correct the error. And then they and just then never they did. And they just never did, yeah. Um, and there's nothing, like, particularly exciting in the set, but yeah. it's... I mean, if that misprinted card played the way they printed it, it would have been really exciting, yeah. but... Yeah, it is... It's not great. It's just another one where they're doing more of the same. And I think, yeah, I'll I'll say that, yeah. F- minus based on the fact that it's annoyingly hard to get because of a, just the fact they didn't reprint it. Yeah. Uh, Forbidden Light. Did that introduce Necrozma? I uh, think I it so. It was bit. It was like the Necrozma flagship set, kind of. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure it introduced it. Does it want to join Crimson Invasion in E? Yeah, Does probably. It, it's like it's not doing a lot. A lot of the Sun and Moon sets, well, until we hit a few. A couple, and it, there's a few good ones towards the end, but a lot of them are just doing the same thing. Celestial Storm, I think, is another case of just doing more of the same. But I think. What even is in Celestial Storm? I know you. Um, opened a lot of it. We didn't open a lot of Celestial Storm. Oh, did we not? No, that was the one where we were missing hollows right up until we bought singles. Oh, is that the one with the Delcaddy? That was the one with the Delcaddy that we just couldn't pull full of the money. Interesting. Well, I can't even remember what's in it, so I'm fine with it being an F. Yeah, I think I think maybe we're being a lot more harsh on the Sun and Moon sets just because they're so recent in our memory yeah. that what's rubbish with them. All right. Let's get ready to argue, because we have very differing opinions on <laughs> Dragon Majesty. I hate this set. I like it. I don't love it. I like it. I didn't like opening it. I don't like how hard it is to complete. Um, I mean, it, it's on par with the other subsets to complete. Like, If you're just talking about how hard it is to complete, it's on par with Shining Legends for how hard it is to complete, or Generations, or whatever. But it's not as much fun to open. That is true, because there are... I think there's a lot... The Obviously, I think there's the same with Shining Legends, when you got to a point where you were getting the same hollows over and over again, but unlike Shining Legends, there isn't the big payoff cards that you're really excited to see. Yeah. There's, like, the one gold Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, that is, I think, the set's saving grace, is Golden Ultra Necrozma. is a very cool-looking card. And I also still say it has three... I think three golden rare trainers. And golden rare trainers, I still think, always look good. I'm not as I'm, big of a fan of golden I'm not trainers. Putting, I'm not saying we put it high. I'm thinking C or D, but I just don't think we put it down in F. I'll give you D on it, I guess. Okay. Begrudgingly. So, Lost Thunder. Um, so this is the, the Zorora flagship set. Yep. The um, huge Azura flagship set. It's it's genuinely a ridiculous size. I think it might be the biggest set of the era. Maybe maybe second to Cosmic Eclipse. Maybe but, yeah. Um, but it's it's I think fully in the doing more of the same, but with so, with some cool cards. I think this. I think I prefer the artwork in this a lot more. To like Forbidden Light. Yeah, it's, it's got some like neat artwork going on, but. 
it's not really... I don't know if I want to put it lower than Guardians Rising. I mean, if we've got Guardians Rising in a C. I don't know. We're, we're at a point where all of the sets sort of blend together all because it's sets. just... Well, I mean, we're about to go into the team-up era, which yeah. separates some so things. So that, that'll separate some things, but it's like, just get the GXs, get the get the rainbow rares. Yeah. Um, so I, I think you're right. I think it is a lot of the same. So, But I, like I said, I think I, I don't want to put it lower than Guardians Rising. I think it's on par with Guardians Rising. So it's a C, which I think puts it... I think it, I think it's maybe too high in comparison to some stuff, but I think it's yeah. Like I don't I don't think it's on the same level as um, EX Dragon. Yeah, or Fossil, but I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just we seem. I think we uh, instead of com- well, I don't think it's it's not possible to compare every set together. I think what we've done is compared sets within that era. Yeah. But you know what? We're two hours in and. <laughs> All right, we're on team up. Um, so team up added tag teams, which are cool. Yeah. Um, I like tag teams. I like the art of tag teams. Yeah. Um, especially the alternate arts. Definitely. Was that so? Team up was Pika choose Ekron. Yeah, that was the big card that everyone wanted. Um, and I think Gengar Mimi Q. Um, I can't remember was, if that was Team Up or Unbroken later. Bonds. But, so Team Up added something that I think was really was a, unique and really cool in the card game. Yeah. I'm leaning higher, maybe like a BC area. Okay, um, I think I'll put, I'll put it in B. I think we're okay going up there. Detective Pikachu. As subsets go, I really like it. Um... So I, I mean, it's not like a subset com- in the same way like Shining Legends or Generations. Is it? right. It's closer to... It's a mini set. It, like, yeah, it's more um, like Dragon Majesty. D- no. Dragon... Dragon Vault, Vault. or uh, Double Crisis. <laughs> um, but I really liked it. I Obviously, I normally don't like the kind of realistic looking Pokemon. I sort of prefer the 2D, but um, I liked that they pulled in kind of the realistic... Yeah. From the movie. But I really like the Detective Pikachu set. Okay. Um, and I, I know we're not taking it into consideration, but some of the other stuff that, like, yeah. the products that you had to get it. And that film. And that film. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I would, I would want to put this almost at, like, an A or an S. I think I'll give you a B. I don't think, <laughs> I, can get, I don't think we can go as high as an A or an S. But Detective Pikachu's so cute. The Detective Pikachu set is not on par with base set. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fine. And then we're going in B. Alright, Unbroken Bonds. That's Reshizard set. Yep, that's Reshizard set. Um, so another kind of lottery card. Yeah. I think I would be willing to put it alongside of Team Up. I don't think it like... Where do we put Team Up? I'm trying and to find B. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it like lost anything, um, but I don't think it really added anything either. Okay, I would be more inclined to put it in next to Lost Thunder than in C, because I think if it, you're saying it doesn't well, add much to Lost Thunder, uh, it doesn't add much to Team Up. Team Up is gaining. So it, it doesn't add much, but it has Rush's art. Is that a good thing? I, I mean, it's. It's a really pretty card. <laughs> that we didn't pull that any of. That we didn't pull any of. Well, in Rainbow, we didn't pull any. Um, or full art. Full art. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's a really good-looking card with a really iconic Pokemon paired up in this, like, new way of doing stuff. I think it's really cool. All right. You got me. Uh, Unified Minds. Mew Mew. But didn't have the best art in the set. No, it the best the, art. The best art is of, the tin art. of Mew Three got saved for the the tin. Um, I I think this is another not really adding stuff. Yeah. I but think this is a D. I could see it. It's definitely. I, th- not I as... think I prefer it to have been light because the re- like the Mew Two Mew is still cool. Um, Cherish Ball is cool. Yeah. Did you, and I think did Unified Minds have one Golden Stadium? Uh, Viridian Forest, maybe. Yeah, I think the introduction of the Golden Stadiums is really cool. So I think that's that saves. Does it. that even Whoops. bump it up higher? Or oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. All right, we're now running. Definitely running out of room. All right, what have we got? But Hidden Fates. 
Remind me which one Hidden Fates is. What do you mean, remind you which one Hidden Fates is? <laughs> oh, is that the, the shiny set? <laughs> yeah. I love Hidden Fates. I love Hidden Fates. I think it's cool in concept and really irritating in practice. Yes. Um, yes. I like opening it. It's, it's probably the most, like, the most high you can get off of opening Pokemon cards. I think every pack should have had a shiny vault card. Yeah. Even I, if they kept the rarity so that, you know, the the GXs and the golds and stuff were still hard to get, I think every pack should have had, you know, a reverse and a... And a shiny And vault. a shiny vault card. Yeah, that would have been much nicer. It, it, it's so hard to complete the shiny vault as it is. Also, the fact that it, it replaces the reverse hollow, so it's it's really awkward in that you want your reverse hollows, but you also, it also means you're not mm-hmm. getting a shiny vault. But then it also means if you hit, if you complete the reverse hollows, it's like every other... Pu- You're going to complete the reverse hollows a lot sooner than you complete Shiny Vault. Right. And if, if the Shiny Vault set wasn't like 90... What is it, 94 cards, yeah. Um, I don't think we'd have as yeah. much of a problem with it. But I mean, Shiny Vault is still really, really cool. Mm-hmm. So... So I, I really like it. Um, I like opening it. Um, even though we've decided we're not going to get any more packs... It's yeah, that's, something where I, mean, I would... Yeah, that's just because of the availability, too. And yeah, but it's it's something where I would like to open more packs. Yeah, I think... So I think it's... It, it, I mean, it's it's not like an S or probably even an A, but I do really like it. So I think in B? If you're I, okay with I'm that. okay with B. Okay. All right. So Cosmic Eclipse. So on the face of it, it would look like it's just doing more of the same again, but... They've re they've changed the rainbow rares. Yeah. The rainbow rares now have a really nice actual rainbow foiling, mm-hmm. so they all look different and unique to each other. They've also added the character rares, mm-hmm. which are like full art Pokemon with a character on them, and they're relatively easy to get. You can get a, yeah. a set relatively easily. They're nice. Um, the artwork on a lot of the regular GXs looks really nice, and the like alternate art, full art. You know, where you've got the trainers in with the GXs. Yeah. Like the v- the vile plume, I think stands out. To me, it's got Erica. They're just the regular vile plume GX with Erica in the background. Looks really nice. So Reshiram and Zekrom is Reshiram and Zekrom so with good. N. Uh, the Silvalli <laughs> with Gladiator. Oh yeah, that one's really good too. So, I think we're definitely in a, and this one adds more golden stadiums as well, mm-hmm. which I really like. I really like the golden stadiums. So I think we're, it's on the. It's not just something that's adding more. It's it's expanding on what was already yeah. there in a really nice way. And it's and it's a good way to end the era as well. That's true. And it's got like some some really good cards in, like, Dialga, Palkia, Arceus. Oh, the alternate art of that where they're so where they're the yeah. statue. That is an incredible artwork. I really love that one. Um, so how high are you wanting to take this? Uh, we've topped it up that it feels like it wants to be an A. But then I'm compar- I'm comparing it to other stuff, and I, th- I think I'm fine with it being an A. Okay. I think I do actually like it more than Hidden Fates. All right, and then the last thing that the that we've got here is the Japanese exclusive Versus set. That's one that they've put in there. Interesting. Do you That's going to be on you. <laughs> um, I don't really know too much about the Japanese Versus set. It was a really, really big set. I think it was that was one where every uncommon was a trainer, and it it was basically um, it was the gym sets for Johto, so it was gym leaders Pokemon. Okay. But it was it had like the the platinum gym leader style mechanic, I think, where so stage twos were basics and stuff. Okay. So it was it was kind of cool. I just I don't know where to put it because I haven't. Like I don't really, I can't really compare it to the other sets as well. Like the English set's kind of easier to compare to each other, but the Versus set is like really difficult to see where it fits with it's the English set. It's very different, and we don't like we don't have experience opening it. Yeah. So let's throw it in a C. It's mid level. I mean, it's. I think it, as I said, it probably deserves higher, but it's hard to compare. I think. How's the artwork? Really nice. I'll put it up to a B. That's pretty fair. All right. So, to review, <laughs> we've decided that the pinnacle of sets, the S plus sets, are EX Delta Species, 
Diamond and Pearl Majestic Dawn and Shining Legends. I'm beginning to regret my life choices. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to scrap this and do it over, though. <laughs> S-tier is Legendary Collection, Aquapolis, Crystal Guardians, Hot Gold, Soul Silver, and Call of Legends. That actually isn't too bad. Yeah. <laughs> just so the S plus just looks ridiculous. <laughs> uh, A's are the base set, Neo Genesis, Neo Revelation, and Neo Discovery. Apparently, we really like Gen two. Apart from, <laughs> apart from uh, Discover Discovery, it was so it's it's Genesis, Revelation, and Destiny. Okay. Right uh, Unseen Forces, Holland Phantoms, Stormfront, uh, Rising Rivals. Undaunted, Triumphant, Generations, and a Cosmic Eclipse. That's a nice spread of... Yep. Uh, B level, uh, we had Jungle. Whichever gym that is. I think that's Challenge. Oh, we said uh, Challenge was the better one. Sky Ridge, Ruby Sapphire, Deoxys, Emerald, Legend Maker, Platinum, Unleashed, Dark Explorers, Dragon Vault, Double Crisis, Roaring Skies, Sun and Moon, Team Up... Detective Pikachu, Unbroken Bonds, Hidden Fates, and the Versa series. That's a good spread, too. Uh, C, we said Fossil, Team Rocket, Expedition, Dragon, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Diamond and Pearl, Legends Awakened, Arceus, Phantom, is that Phantom Forces? Phantom Forces, Primal Clash, Breakthrough, Evolutions, Guardians, Rising, and Lost Thunder. Just seeing it now, just seeing with EX Dragon and Fire Red, Leaf Green sitting directly below Detective Pikachu. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> regretting what we've done here. Uh, D's. Uh, Gym Heroes, Neo Discovery, Hidden Legends, Dragon Frontiers, Great Encounters, Black and White. Noble Victories. Noble Victories, <laughs> Dragons Exalted, Flashfire, Breakpoint, Dragon Majesty, Unified Minds. E, Base Set 2, Team Rocket Returns, Power Keepers, Mysterious Treasures, Next Destinies, Boundaries Crossed, Plasma Freeze, Plasma Blast, Legendary Treasures, Crimson Invasion of Forbidden Light. F. Sandstorm. Sandstorm, Supreme Victors, Plasma Storm, XY, Furious Fists, Ancient Origins, Fates Collide, Burning Shadows, and Celestial Storm, and F minus. <laughs> I'm still surprised we've got Magma Aqua in them, F minus. But Magma Aqua, Secret Wonders, Emerging Powers, Steam Siege, Ultra Prism. Well, I, that was an adventure. That was something. I think we, at least as we were going, justified the choice every time, but it felt like. We were judging each set completely independently. <laughs> yes. Especially outside of eras. Yes. So that was a fun way to spend two and a half hours. No. So we hope you enjoyed. I'll put a link in the description for the tier maker. You can go make your own tiers. I'll let me know if you agree. I'd be shocked if you did or <laughs> disagreed with what we've done here. Um, let us know what you'd move up, what you'd move down. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Bye. You yeah, bye. Thanks for watching. Check out some more videos right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome Pokemon content from DJ Gigabyte. Gotta, Gotta catch, catch them all! all. <laughs>